All right, y'all, welcome to, a, uh, I'm not going to say South Florida Gospel News today because I got some things to really say that the church folks might not like. I apologize for the delay before I started talking, but I have to wait until the program tells me to start talking. So here I am live in the studio. It's Wednesday night. I'm usually at Riviera Beach City Council meetings. However, I did not have to work tonight. I let someone else get the opportunity to learn how to do it. I've been doing city council meetings for a long time. Uh, what, 13 years now. Every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, special meetings, whatever. I have to work, but I did go and set up, you know, I even showered and put my good shirt on. But I didn't have to stay, but I want to thank my niece Amber for sending me this hot off the press breaking news about the press conference regarding the disappearing act of Miss Carly Russell. You know, she vanished. She said she saw a baby on the side of the highway and she called 911. And then after that, uh, a relative of her, she was supposedly on the phone with, um, said they heard her screaming. And then um, all they heard was background noise, I guess, from the highway. And then um, she, uh, what, 48, 49 hours, she was missing. And then I just got off, hot off the press from my contacts and a... um, press release that I watched that said Miss Carly girl you was old lying thing girl they didn't say that but what the police chief said he deals with is facts and so do I there was a former River Beach City Council person that says he deals with data documents and evidence and so do I and they're not calling her a liar I want to say allegedly, but given the facts that they presented, I just say she's a big old fat delusional liar. She got some mental issues obviously going on, but you know, I'm no doctor, but let's get into it. Okay, so Miss Carly disappeared. Then she showed up at her parents' house, right? And then her parents did an interview with the Today Show, I believe that was yesterday, which was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. You could tell by looking at the father that she was that he knew the story she probably told him was not true. Look at his eyes as the mom is speaking on Carly's behalf. And well, she fought for her life physically and mentally. Girl, bye. Okay, so here's my take on this. So the police said, so first of all, she stole some toilet paper and some other stuff from work before she left work. I think they said like a bathrobe and some toilet paper and some other stuff she stole. And then... She went and ordered some food from somewhere, and then she went to Target and bought snacks, you know. And I would say things that you would take with you on the road or if you're, taking, if you're going camping or something like that, where you know you ain't going to be around no food source. You got some granola bars and things like that. So she made a, well, she told the uh, detectives that it was a white man with orange hair with a big bald spot in the back and a lady that kidnapped her on the highway. Okay, first of all, let me back up, let me slow down because I was really excited about this and I'm I'm very upset about it. I'm very, very upset and I'm gonna tell you why. So Miss Carly says that she saw the baby, she called 911. And if you listen to the 911 call, you can kind of tell that the 911 dispatch really does not believe her because of the way she was answering the questions. The lady said, was the baby black or white? he's white well what is he wearing um a t-shirt well he doesn't have on any pants um it looks like he's wearing a diaper right and then she said what kind of car are you driving um i'm in a red mercedes it's an suv no no it's not an suv it's a sedan all right and so you as you're listening to the call the 911 operators like okay i'm gonna keep answering asking her these questions but I think this lady is something's going on with her because nobody else called 911 about a baby on the side of an interstate highway. And they said they measured the distance in her car. Now, what Miss Carly forgot is from the time you put your feet on the floor to where you step out that door and come back, you're being recorded somewhere. You're being recorded in your home. You're being recorded in your vehicle. 
your phone, whatever source of technology is around you, it is recording you. So they had surveillance video of her leaving work. They had surveillance video of her going to that place to get food. And they also had surveillance video of her um, going to Target, copy of her receipt, right? And another thing, the police departments pull all resources, all of their detectives, all of their officers, and put them on this case because it was such an outcry, especially from Black people, saying how we are often ignored in missing persons cases. So this chief say, hey, this has gotten national and international attention. We got to do something about this. So he pulled his local, state, and federal resources. And the federal resources was the forum of SS, the Secret Service. And you know, Miss Carly, they're not going to miss a beat. They will not leave a stone unturned until they put your long line of lies together and presented facts, not hearsay, facts, data, documents, documents, and evidence as to what you did. They presented your uh, internet searches while you were at work, Amber Alert, the movie Taken. And it was something else about some kind of reward or something she searched. All her Google searches and wherever else she searched, they put all of that together. And they was like, hey, that's weird. Like eight hours before she was searching about the movie Taken and about Amber Alerts. So then uh, Carly said, hey, the this bald-headed, orange-haired man and this woman, they, they, didn't, they didn't tie me up. They put me in the 18-wheeler, but they didn't tie me up. And uh, they didn't want to leave impressions on my wrist. They fed me cheese crackers, which, by the way, that was something that she bought from Target that she said the people fed to her. And then she said she fought her way out of there and she left, made her way home. Somebody, uh, she said, uh, I think the detective, the uh, chief said a friend of hers picked her up while she was walking and gave her a ride home. Now, Miss Carly, let me tell you what's about to happen to you. First of all, you're going to jail for lying. And they're going to make you pay restitution because when they pulled every resource that they had, in the city where you live, where you claim you were abducted, there are murder cases, real missing persons cases, domestic abuse cases, all kinds of cases that those detectives stopped working on in order to help find you. Now, if you wanted to go cheat on your boyfriend or have a little rendezvous or whatever it is you had going on and you planned this thing or you thought you was going to try to figure out how to get some money out of it, it didn't work. You're going to jail. And your mom, she uh, she wants to believe you, but I don't know about that. He was sitting there saying yes. His mouth was saying yes, but his soul and eyeballs were saying no. No, she lying. That was a whole fabricated thing and i'm saying that that's not what the police said but they presented facts not hearsay now they interviewed carly <clears throat> interviewed the parents they said first they were cooperative and i guess once the ss secret service and sheriff's office and the fbi and everybody else presented them with the facts oh miss carly don't want to talk no more mm -mm. and they said they ready to talk to her when she's ready, they say, if she called right now, we would talk to her. We're not saying she's a liar, but we are presenting facts. That's what they say. All right. Now, another reason why I'm upset about this, <clears throat> about this whole lie, and I'm just going to call it what it is, a L-I-E, a big fat lie that she fabricated that she probably didn't think would get this big. Maybe she needs some attention from her boyfriend or her parents. Maybe she was just tired of going to school and going to work. And she just wanted to just get a break. And maybe she had other plans that fell through. So she had to go back to her parents' home and told them a big fat lie, which I don't believe that the father believes. Like I said, go to NBC, the Today Show, and look at the interview that they gave. So fabricated lie. And the mom knew she was lying, too. Just come on with it. Just, you could just tell 
she was lying because the reporter asked her, well, when you say she fought her way out, in what way? Oh, oh, physically and mentally. Come on now. Come on now. So, Miss Ma'am, you might have to uh, get a second mortgage on your home because every hour that was spent looking for Carly, every dollar that was spent looking for Carly, y'all got to pay that money back. And I think the the people of Alabama deserve for their de- tax dollars to be returned. Carly, you're going to have to pay some restitution. It might take you 20 years to work that out, but you need to pay. You need to apologize to the volunteers that were out looking for you. And then you need to apologize to people like me who I felt you were lying. And I said it in my last video that something wasn't right. That <clears throat> first of all, you said it was a white baby on the side of the road and nobody, nobody else called 911. And they said she supposedly followed that baby for 600 yards. You know how far that is? That is a long way. That's six football fields. That are three or she said the toddler. How old is the toddler? Oh, he, like he might be three or four. Yeah, right. So, Miss Carly. Uh, we calling you to the carpet, Miss Carly. Come to the come to the front of the church, cause we gonna rebuke that lying demon in you. That's got to go. You lied to your family. You had your sister all worked up, giving press conferences, and then we, as a black community, want to. I'm gonna say shame on you, because there are so many black people who end up missing, who get zero in support from police departments and volunteers and helping to search. And how dare you? abuse the system like this how dare you based on a lie and the police haven't called her a liar i did the police department presented facts they presented their evidence to say hey what she is saying and what actually happened is not lining up miss carly uh it's just shame on you shame on you and i will say to the people who say it ain't none of our business and letting them do the investigation. Well, I think that for those who were saying that, there was already some doubt in your mind, too, that she was lying. She's a liar. She is a big, fat liar, probably a touch mentally ill. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. But to come up with this whole elaborate thing is a white male baby. She went from baby to toddler on the side of the road in a white t-shirt at night with a dive on. Ladies say, turn on your hazard lights. So the video of the highway has her driving with her hazard lights on. Where the baby at? Who got the baby? Then all of a sudden, a white man, an old white man with orange hair with a big bald patch in the back climbs over the fence and, and and abducts her and put her into an 18-wheeler. Where is the 18-wheeler that stopped on the video? Where is that at? Then she said they took her to a, uh, uh, they had her inside the 18-wheeler, and they were, the lady that was supposedly with her with them fed her cheese crackers. She was able to fight her way out and get back home and bam on her parents' door early in the morning. First of all, let's, let, let me go to my first theory about this wig. It is, I said in my last video, one thing about black women, if she had that wig glued on, she going to have some patches of skin missing from the front of her forehead, right? Because her sister said she had a hair braided down. She had a wig on. So they say she left her wig in the car, her phone, her Apple Watch, her purse and the and the food that she bought from the restaurant, <laughs> right? So when I heard the thing about that wig, I was like, something ain't right, but <laughs> something is not right. So what what happened? Did she get too hot and take the wig out? Did the bald headed white man made her snatch the wig off her, or maybe she he snatched it off her and left it in the back seat? What happened? What what happened to the baby? Baby just disappeared. Where the parents at? So, Miss Carly, I would suggest you just admit that you lied and get you some mental help. 
Now, one thing that you did for sure, since the writers are on strike, you just gave them a whole movie for free. I mean, that's that's some lifetime Netflix. That is quite the story. And you did it all for free. The writers didn't even have to do it. You just gave the, the Paramount and uh, uh, MGM, Lionsgate. Tyler Perry, they're going to be moving right now. That's your next movie. Call it a big, fat, delusional liar. Got to get people some help. We got to hope. The main thing I hope for Miss Carly is that she be held accountable. Remember the balloon boy? Remember when the parents made up that story that, that this big old giant balloon and the little boy was in there and they had all those um, sheriff's office. And remember that sheriff? That was that ran that balloon down and dove on it. He thought that boy was in that balloon, and when it came down, nothing, nobody, no boy, no nothing was in there. And the parents had made that that up. You know what happened to them? Put them right in jail, and made them pay for the resources that were used. So, Carly, you owe me and everybody else an apology. The bald head white man, right, right, right now, there are some bald headed white men with a bald patch with orange hair that are probably terrified because that's what she told detectives who kidnapped her. That's what she said. That's what she told the boyfriend too. I wonder if they still together, sir, please run, run as fast as you can. And thank God, thank God that you now know, please run. But anyway, the, Public safety was an issue and question with the police chief where she lives. And he was saying he was getting all kinds of phone calls and every tip that came in, no matter how ridiculous it was, the officers and detectives that were working around the clock followed up on it because they were determined to find her and they were determined to bring her home. Around the clock, 24 seven, they were working. And like I said, every other case that they worked on, they stopped working on it to look for Carly because Carly disappeared. And because we were complaining and, you know, oftentimes when black women especially go missing and black children, nothing is said. Now, and because of that and because of the national attention and international attention that that Carly generated by her disappearance, he said, hey. My goal was to get her home safely. That was my goal. And we'll work out the other stuff later, but I want her to get home safely. And the chief was saying he was happy that she was home with her family. They were relieved. However, Miss Carly says she ain't got no more rap for the police department. She done told her story, which is what it is, a story. And they wanted to bring her in for a second interview. And so far, she has refused. She said, I don't have nothing else to say because you do know that once they get you in there and they catch you in them lies you done told, Miss Ma'am, they're going to clink, clink them handcuffs on you and you're going to jail. You're going to jail and you're going to have to pay restitution for what you did. Do I think people who are mentally ill need to be locked up, which obviously there's something going on with her to make up this elaborate story with these details that it, on the 911 call, it seemed like she was making up along the way because she kept saying, she kept answering her question. The She kept answering the 911 dispatcher's question with a question. You know how people say, um, you know, uh, she said, uh, the, the 911 dispatcher said, well, what shirt is he wearing? She would say, what shirt is he wearing? He's wearing a white T-shirt like that. You know, the answer was in the form of a question. So I knew right then something was going on with her to tell the lies. And I'm sure the, dis the dispatch, they are trained to catch the ones. They know. They know when you tell the lies, when you call. And that lady knew she was lying. The detectives knew that she was lying. The chief knew she was lying. But they just had to piece it together. They didn't know that at first. But they brought in all of their resources to piece it together because she just disappeared. And what I think happened is whoever she was supposed to meet or whatever she was doing that she got tired of, she had to go home. 
They said she had $107 in her sock, right? Because she left a purse in the car. So she put the, put the cash money in her sock. And I guess her plan wasn't working out. You know, went going out in the woods thinking you're going to hide. And the mosquitoes probably got a hold to her butt. Some of them snakes probably ran across her feet. She left the wig. So uh, I guess to make herself uh, lighter. And, you know, if you're going to camp, you're going to take some toilet paper and little snacks and things to see how long probably she could stay there. I don't know. Maybe that man she planned on meeting out there say, never mind, you a little bit too weird for me. This ain't going to work. You know, and why put your family through that? That's another thing. Why put your family through that? That is absolutely ridiculous. To put your family through that kind of trauma and then just show up. No, ma'am, you're going you gonna to get them charges put on you. I guarantee you that. And if they don't charge her, if they feel sorry enough for her uh, and, and offer her some help, they're going to give her a bill for the band power hours. And just for public safety, just having the public think, Especially with that guy on the island who was a serial murderer that they just arrested this week. To think that there might be somebody out there on the interstate kidnapping people. Just that's, that is scary enough by itself. To think that there's some white man in an 18-wheeler on the highway kidnapping folks on the side of the road watching a baby on the side of the road. So they pick you up, Carly. How come they left the baby? <clears throat> now, I'm wondering, um, since the detectives and especially Secret Service, they know everything. Listen here, Carly. You don't got your neighbors involved. You don't got everybody on your job, your coworkers. They don't dug into all of their records. Believe that. All of their relatives' records. Because they're going to find out what's going on. Like, why you feel like you had to... Research rewards for Amber Alerts. Who got some money? Did you need some money that bad? Are you in some financial debt that you need to get out? You could have just did a GoFundMe. You could have did GoFundMe, and I was waiting for the family to say they have a GoFundMe page to help look for you. I don't know if they did one or not. I sure hope they didn't, and if, if they did one and people gave, give the people their money back. So, Cardi, you got to give an account. We've all done things and we all are held accountable, especially when you use in public resources and the public outcry causing a public panic with concern about public safety. You need to come on, get this interview. And I, and I also want to find out how much your parents got paid by the Today Show because I know they didn't do it for free because that was an ex exclusive interview. They didn't give much detail. They knew you was telling lies and they, oh, let's wait for the investigation. Well, you knew that was coming. They knew it too. That's why when you watch that interview, you look at that dad, cut his eyes back and forth while, while his wife was talking. He knew that she was supporting them lies that Carly had told. So that's my spiel on that, Miss Carly. You might as well get ready. Get your canteen ready. Get your family ready. Whatever money you think they had or needed, it didn't work. It didn't work. Your lives have been unfolded. And you might want to think about getting some mental help. Okay. All right, y'all. That's my spiel. That's all I had to say about that. I had to get that off my chest because that was bothering me really, really badly. Um, especially after having helped out with a missing persons case er earlier this year. And, and like I said, so sad and it's sad and pathetic that she would go through this and make up this elaborate story to pull resources away from real missing persons cases, real murder cases, real domestic violence, child abuse cases that those detectives were working on. They all had to stop what they were doing and work on this. Shame on you, Carly Russell. That's my opinion. I heard the facts from the police department and from the police chief. All right, y'all, that's my spill on that. I had to get that off my chest. Please like and share this video. Rewind. 
watch it again and by all means tell a friend i'll talk to y'all later okay bye